Okay, in this video we want to begin to work with the slope-intercept form of, the, of a linear equation. And you recall that that is y equals mx plus b, where m refers to the slope and b refers to the y-intercept. So we want to be able to identify or calculate slope and y-intercept in two different ways. First, we want to be able to identify them from the equation itself. And second, we want to be able to identify them from the graph itself. And then to show that what we calculate from the graph and what we calculate from the equation are really the same thing. So let's take a look at A. First of all, the y-intercept is pretty easy to identify. Remember that the y-intercept is the point on the graph where the graph crosses the y-axis. So if I were to put a circle here, you can see that that is uh, y is equal to 2. So that is the point 0, 2 is the y-intercept. And if you notice, that's why we have a positive 2 over there. And I'll change that to not just say 2, but to include the sign in front of it and say positive 2. So the point on the graph where the graph crosses, the point on the line where the graph crosses the y-axis is at y equals 2. And so in the form y equals mx plus b, we have the plus 2 at the end. Next, how do we calculate slope? Well, we can start from the y-intercept, and then we're going to go up 2 over 3. And so our slope there is m is equal to up 2 over 3, so positive 2 over 3. And again, we can see that in the equation as the number that's multiplied times x in the equation. So the slope from the equation point of view is the number that's multiplied times x. And the y-intercept is the number that is added or subtracted at the end. So we can see our slope and our y-intercept both from the graph and in the equation itself. So let's take a look at b. Similarly, similarly, we have a y-intercept. The point on the line where the graph crosses the y-axis, it appears to be at x equals 0, y equals negative 1. And so, if we look at our equation, we have a minus 1 there in the, uh, at the end of the slope-intercept form of that straight line. So, the y-intercept we can see it clearly on the graph. We can also see it clearly represented in the slope-intercept form of that equation. Then let's calculate slope. So with calculating slope, we're always going to, in general, sometimes we'll run out of space on the graph to do this, but in general, we're always going to move from the left to the right. So in this case, we're going to start at the y-intercept, go down by 2 and over by 1. When I go down by 2, I'm going to say negative 2 because I went down and over by 1, so I say over 1. So I would say that this slope is down 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1, which we can also simply say is negative 2. And if you look in our equation, the negative 2 is right there. It's the number that's multiplied times x. Once again, in the equation, the number that's multiplied by x is the slope, and the number that we add or subtract onto the end is the y-intercept. So we can see them in the graph. We can see them in the equation. And that's the very first thing that we want to be able to identify uh, when we're working with straight lines. Can we find the y-intercept? Can we measure what the slope is? 
Okay, so we'll go on to look at some more examples of this. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. We want to do two things. We want to describe the slope of each line and then we want to find the slope. So I'm going to actually change this just a little bit. Instead of saying describe the slope of the line, I want to just say describe each line. And the words that we want to use to describe the line are increasing, decreasing, horizontal, or vertical. So we're going to describe lines actually by looking at their slopes and we're going to describe them in one of these four ways. It's either increasing, it's decreasing, it's horizontal, or it's vertical. All right, and then we're going to actually calculate the slope using the methods that we talked about in this earlier in this video or in the previous videos. So let's look at the first line. Describing a slope or describing a line from its slope, we are going to assume that we will always be moving from left to right. So in this case, as we move from point negative 3, negative 2 over to point 3, comma 2, we can see that we are, that this line is increasing. So number one, we describe the line using the slope. By viewing the slope, we can see that that line is increasing. Now how do we measure that slope? We're going to start at our leftmost point and rise in this case rise. So we went up one, two, three, four. So we went up by four and then our horizontal one, two, three, four, five, six. So we go over six and so we'll say that the slope is four, up four, over six which we should simplify to 2, 2 over 3. Now what that means is that we should also then be able to go up 2 and over 3 and be able to hit the line again, which we do. Up 2, over 3, we hit another good point on the graph at that um, by using that strategy. So we're going to say that that graph is increasing and its slope is 2 over 3. The next example. The next example is uh, one where the graph is actually falling from left to right. So we'll say it is decreasing. And how do we measure? We're always going to start with the vertical component first. One, two, three. So we went down by three, so I'll say negative three there. And then we go over by two, and so we would say that the slope is down three over two. So down three, we say negative three over two, um, and that helps us to measure the slope of the line there. Okay, so we're either going to use the words increasing, decreasing, horizontal, or vertical. We're always assuming that we're moving from left to right. And when we finish uh, calculating the slope, we're also going to simplify that fraction. Do not write it as a decimal. Do not write it as a mixed number. We're going to write it as a simplified fraction. Okay, we'll go on to a couple more examples of these and uh, we'll conclude this video. All right then, we, in, this, uh, in these few examples, we're going to continue doing the same thing. Describe the line, and I'll just say very quickly, the reason I don't like to say describe the slope of the line and say that it's increasing is that the slope is not increasing. The slope is the same throughout the line um, in each of these cases, but the line itself is increasing, decreasing, or horizontal or vertical. All right, so we want to describe the line. So the first thing we want to say, we can see that as we move from left to right, this line is decreasing. Next, since it's decreasing, we can see that we will have to 
go down 2. And when I go down, I write a negative 2 there. And then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I will write my slope as m is equal to down 2 over 5. Negative 2 fifths is the slope of that line. Let's go on to the next one. Well, in this case, as we move from left to right, this line is increasing. And since it's increasing, we're going to start by moving up. We move up 1, 2, 3, 4. And so I write a positive 4 there over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so we say that the slope is up 4, or positive 4, over 6. And we're going to simplify that to be 2 over 3. Now, that means, that should mean then, that we could have gone up 2 and over 3, and we should have hit another good point on the line, up 2 over 3. And we can see that that does work. Um, as well. All right, the next line. Well, the next line we have a little bit of difficulty here, um, except not really, not that big of a deal. Our graph is, uh, the grid is uh, spaced by twos in this particular case. And we can see we're actually given the points on the line there. So if we were to count upwards, we wouldn't count by ones in this case. We would have to count by twos, or by half, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I hope everybody can see that. And over, the same way, it's by twos, each, each unit um, is 2 in this case. So that would be 2 and then 3. So that would give us a slope of 2 over 3, uh, sorry, 7 over 3. And we can see that this line is also increasing. Now, just for the sake of this particular one, where it's, it may not be so easy to view, to find the slope from the grid, we can use those points, and I'll use this time to illustrate. What I would do, I start with the leftmost point and call its x-coordinate x1, its y-coordinate y1. The rightmost point would be x2, and its y-coordinate y2. Then I'm simply going to use my formula for slope, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we would get y2 is 4 minus y1 is negative 3. I don't just write 4 minus 3, it's 4 minus negative 3. And that would be over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 2. And so we get 4 minus negative 3, which is 7, and 5 minus 2, which is 3. And you can see that whether we use the formula or we use the graph, uh, we should come up with the same answer each time, each way. OK, we'll stop this video at this point.